Demis Hassadis is the co-founder and CEO of DeepMind. And DeepMind is a company that works with artificial intelligence. In the movie AlphaGo, this is a documentary that goes through the whole journey of them testing AlphaGo, which is a program software, an AI software that is going to compete with the best Go players in the world. Now, this movie is pretty cool um, in terms of AI, in terms of learning about uh, Go, which personally I didn't know about before um, watching the movie. And it's actually a game that is way more complex than chess. So that is interesting to learn about. And um, from our perspective or from my perspective here in terms of leadership, it's also quite interesting to see how uh, Demis Hassabis um, has managed his team throughout this whole process. Now, of course, that there are more people involved and of course that it might not all be on him. Since he is the CEO of the company, I will take him as an, as an example for all of the things that you can see throughout the movie that are good examples in terms of good leadership practices. Now, what I like about this is that this is a documentary of something that really happened. So we are really talking about real people. It's not fiction, even though fiction is also interesting for us to learn. In terms of leadership, it's really good that we look at people who are real and who are really doing things in the real world as well. The first leadership lesson, you will see this at the beginning when he tells his own story. He kind of has this interest within AI. So what drives him is something much bigger than himself. It's much bigger than whichever company he would be and builds. And it's much bigger than profit. So he has this clear vision of how the future could look like and how uh, he with other people could shape that future. So this is one of the keys in terms of leadership that a lot of people miss. Uh, and sometimes people try to come up with a vision to suit certain purposes and the vision should be the thing that drives you. So when you have something that drives you much bigger than yourself, then you can really build a team or an organization or a movement that is really in tune with that message and that can go much beyond yourself. So these people are motivated not because of necessarily Mm, rewards that you might give them, they are motivated because of the topic or because of the purpose that um, you represent and that you're trying to achieve. So this is something really good in terms of leadership uh, and something that you should really work on, especially at the beginning when you are joining a team, when you are starting a company, when you are starting anything from the beginning, that's when you should really understand what is the vision that we want to achieve that is beyond ourselves and that can really motivate other people as well, just like it motivates you. So you can see this with him and that's our first lesson. The second lesson is to hire people who are excited about that as well. In terms of recruitment, we can look at a lot of things in terms of uh, skills and sometimes it's understandable that you might need to trade off uh, someone who is not so passionate about your vision but who has the skills that you need, that might happen and it happens a lot um, to a lot of people and in a lot of companies. So it's understandable. However, when you really have a vision that is so clear and something so clear that you try to achieve, that is completely beyond yourself, that can be contagious. And then you can also by default attract the people who want to work for the same purpose. And if you look at it, the people that are on his team from the AlphaGo movie, they all seem to be really excited about what they're doing. And that's probably because they have a similar interest in AI, especially in AI with games. Um, I can't speak for them, but that is what comes across. And you can see that they are really engaged in, in what they are doing. And it's something completely uh, beyond uh, the scope of simply engineering or simply building something without thinking about the purpose. That's also something that you can see when the software that they built AlphaGo goes against the best Go player in the world. You will see that at some point, this is a spoiler, uh, at some point, um, 
the player will feel very defeated. He will be losing a couple of games and he will feel very defeated. And you will see that even the team can't really celebrate fully because they also have this understanding that it's not about them winning something out of nothing. It really is about the evolution of AI and how that is going to transform our lives as humans and taking a step forward. So they are taking that step forward, but they still understand that this is about AI and how AI is going to shape our life. So you can see that there's something beyond just winning the game in that team. And that's probably because they all have a similar interest in the topic. The third leadership uh, lesson that we can learn from him is the ability to focus. When it comes to AI, you could go in a lot of different ways. And even within the realm of games, you could go in a lot of different ways. They chose to work on AlphaGo, a, a program that is um, supposed to play Go and to beat humans at playing Go. And that's uh, what happens eventually. Um, and from all the options, they chose one and they completely focus on that one. So if you think about the whole scope of AI, you can do a million different things, but they really narrowed on one specific thing and they worked really hard to achieve that one specific thing. Of course, the deep mind as a company, they might have a lot of other things uh, on the background. They might have a lot of other projects and a lot of other products and services or w whatever it is that they are doing besides AlphaGo. But here you will see that the team that is working on AlphaGo is super focused on exactly that project and really in building something that can uh, beat a human when playing Go. So oftentimes you will see in business in general, people who have a purpose, but then they kind of get distracted with a shiny thing next door and they go and follow trends or maybe not even trends, but just something that seems cool at the time and they lose their focus. This is something that we can definitely learn from him and from the team, how focused they were in achieving the goal of having a software that can win when playing Go with a human. And they did it because they were super focused and super clear about what their end goal was. The fourth lesson is the humility that they have about their product you will see that there will be two times mainly where they see some flaws in their software. The first one is before they go and play against the best Go player in the world. So they actually hire uh, another Go player to play with their system and to really identify weak points. And they have the humility to accept that what they have done isn't perfect and uh, take that as learning points. Later on, as the program AlphaGo is actually playing with uh, the best Go player in the world, there will also be a part where um, the software seems to be a little bit off and to start doing some things that don't make a lot of sense. And the team is watching as this happens. They have their graphics, they are understanding what's happening. And they take this with a lot of humility as kind of something that is a fact, it's not either good or bad, they don't get sad or upset or angry at it, it's just something that is there and that if they want, they can take it and then improve on it. So this humility about what you do and this ability to not be defensive about your ideas or about what you've done, this is definitely a leadership lesson because if you have this skill, then you are much more able to develop not just yourself, but actually what you're doing. So with this openness, you can deliver more or you can deliver better. You can improve on what you're doing, which is exactly what they did. And the fifth and final lesson that we can learn from him is that you should really make your team shine. And you see this throughout the documentary. Yes, the documentary starts with him, with Emma's, but then throughout the documentary, you will see the focus on the team and on the team collaborating, on the team working uh, by themselves. And you will see that he never takes the credits for himself whenever they are talking about it. He doesn't need to be on the spotlight. He doesn't need to be the person playing um, 
the moves <laughs> from AlphaGo onto the actual physical board of the Go game. He doesn't need, need to be there, he doesn't need to be the person in all occasions and he really makes his team shine and that's one of the things that I really think is one of the foundations of good leadership is to understand that a leader is much more of an enabler than of a rock star and that your team members are the rock stars. They are the ones that really need to be shining, especially when it comes to their strengths, when it comes to their work. And as a leader, yes, there will be times where you also are going to be on the spotlight and you need to be in that position. But there's a lot of other times where you just need to support other people. If everything comes down to you, if you have to be on the spotlight all the time and be involved in everything, your impact is limited to your ability, to the ability of one person. If you cultivate this habit of empowering other people, empowering the people in your team, then the impact that you can have grows exponentially because then it's not just the impact of one person yourself, but it's the impact of everyone who is in your team. So these are the five lessons that I took from the AlphaGo movie from the perspective of the DeepMind uh, team, in particular, their co-founder and CEO. Uh, of course, there are many others for sure. These are the five that were the most visible for me that I would also like to share with you. And I hope that this was interesting, um, an interesting reflection on what we observe in the documentary. If you do want to watch the documentary in case you haven't yet, I will also leave the link below. And um, I think that is it for today. I wish you a very nice day. If you have any other leadership questions, feel free to reach out and I will see you next time. Bye.